Welcome to No Master, No Slave. A show that seeks to reveal the hidden aspects of our world. History, philosophy, science, spirituality, and the truth of that which is. No master, no slave. Welcome to episode 8 of No Master, No Slave. I'm Mike. I'm joined with my friends, Zach and Nick. Today, we will be continuing our Methods of Manipulation series as laid out by Mark Passio in his What on Earth is Happening podcast and radio show. We'll begin with the third method of manipulation, primal fears. Primal fears consist of four main parts, darkness, predators, abandonment, and chaos. The first one, darkness, deals with an ancient and very real fear of what lies in the dark and what it represents. To both ancient and modern man, darkness represents the unknown, limited vision, danger, possible harm, and lack of sunlight. Not knowing what is lurking in the darkness means you could be facing a dangerous animal, a hostile tribe, or even just a treacherous environment where you could get seriously injured. Add in the limited vision, all these things become even more threatening. Lack of sunlight is another very real fear related to darkness. Without the sun, life does not grow, there is no heat, no vision, and life literally feels quite cold and dark. These are fears that are held deep within humanity's psyche and have been preyed upon by dominators for practically all of our history. It is very easy to control a populace when you introduce a fear so deep and primal, such as darkness, into their mind. Since it has been within our subconscious and psyche for so long, it is easy to bring that fear out of people if a dominator so chooses to do so. The mainstream media is a perfect example of a dominator, and the criminal elite keep people in a state of perpetual fear of darkness, predators, abandonment, and chaos. They combine all of these to create a deadly cocktail that keep people locked into the reptilian part of the brain, which is only concerned with survival. It is very hard for people to solve the problems we face and unite humanity with a common purpose when you're just focused on your day-to-day survival. Yeah, I I would say the fear of darkness equates to the fear of the unknown in a big way. Potential dangers and predators may be lurking in the darkness, and we know that if we aren't equipped with some familiar vantage point or fundamental understanding of where we are, what we're doing, what else is around us, and we instinctively know that we are vulnerable in our nescience or in our ignorance. And this gives rise to the fear of what may happen to us while exploring or advancing into the, into the darkness or the unknown. And that is the fear of chaos. And the fear of chaos traps people in the current paradigm that they are in. The fear of chaos correlates with the fear of the unknown. People fear a potential chaotic experience within the realm of the unknown and then cling to what they already know. This, in effect, atrophies the imagination due to a fear-based lack of use. If the only reality that people know is the current system of control and all its coercion, violence, and slavery, then their fears of the potential chaotic transition from the current system to a new paradigm prevents them from even exploring or imagining other forms of societal management and systems of living without the current control-based institutions keeping the people under the state's thumb. In other words, true freedom to exist without control-based institutions and hierarchies is being equated with chaos due to humanity's collective fear of the unknown or darkness. And these deeply held fears trick people into accepting their slavery because it's what they know and they're comfortable in what they know. All the beautiful, moral, freedom-based options regarding humanity's systems of living end up squandered and left in darkness because the people choose to be enslaved and to destroy the world rather than boldly and courageously explore the unknown in the face of potential chaos. So the suffering endlessly ensues in this current paradigm. 
So one can see how these primal fears can be played upon and exploited by the occult dominators and how it is a very powerful tool in their service to sustain their control over people. Yeah, because these fears are real. And it's not that we're trying to ignore the fear or have no fear, but like you were saying, it's be courageous and act in spite of the fear. And in putting that thinking in between stimulus and response and having that responsibility and that ability to respond to the stimulus that is fearful and not being a, a, a coward and feeling completely inadequate and saying, I need some controlling class to come in and save me from these predators, from this unknown. I need someone to not abandon me, to keep this order so that I'm not in this chaos. And what people don't really understand is that the biggest form of chaos that we can be exposed to is a form of covert chaos that is where violent dominators come in to give us quote unquote order through violence. And it doesn't even equate. Mark Passio had a really good point when he said you can't dry clothes by pouring water on it. Well, you can't get rid of chaos by having a covert chaos, violent based system of hierarchy and domination to quote unquote give you the order. It's not order. You know, this violent system we live in is not order. You know, they're spraying stuff over our heads. We don't know what they're putting in it. We know they're putting fluoride in our water. They're stealing our money for warfare. This, this is a very chaotic situation and it could escalate really quickly because we've given more and more power to these institutions of domination because of a lack of responsibility, a lack of courage to understand these primal fears and take responsibility as an individual and a community to respond to them in a nonviolent and organized manner. They're preying on us by having a deeper knowledge of these fears than most of us have. Yeah, it gets in the whole predators um, part of the primal fears, being afraid of the possible predator that could be lurking in the darkness. So then you have that goes in hand in hand with both the darkness and the predators. You have a dual fear there. And, you know, a good example of a predator and actually a use of the word ob the obfuscation term is the Israeli Defense Force. Here you have a group of individuals who are they're calling their actions defensive when all they do are this, they are the aggressors upon a people who are trying to be just left alone. Regardless of what you think is happening in Palestine and in Israel, look at it from a human perspective. Once you drop the ethnic barriers, this barrier, that barrier, you know, nation states, all this stuff, and you just look at it from a human perspective, you see what's really going on there is a people who are being slowly wiped off the face of the earth by a group, a group of order followers, people who are preying upon others. And it's interesting because most people would never view Israel as a predator. They view them as our ally. I talk to people all the time and they always think, well, you know, of course we should support Israel. They're our allies. But I mean, they haven't done really any research into it and they haven't looked at this from a human perspective. It's always afraid of, oh, ISIS or, you know, or Al Qaeda or all these different groups of terrorists who are always lurking in the darkness, ready to pounce at you at any time, create chaos and havoc for, for everybody. Not ever looking where these so-called predators even come from. In fact, this is interesting to look into. ISIS, well, granted, they've been severely uh, taken down a notch by Russia lately. There were 50,000 Iraqi soldiers on the U.S. payroll. Now, it just so happens that there were 50,000, about 60,000 ISIS members. Isn't that an interesting correlation? Do I think that's a coincidence? No, I don't. I think that's exactly who they are. They're, they're a created predator by the system itself. ISIS was created by the West so you could fear Muslim extremists, quote-unquote. And if that was the case, then why would, why would ISIS be running around destroying Muslim-based countries? It doesn't make any sense. Syria and Iraq are Arabic countries. They're Muslim-based countries. It's, it doesn't make any sense. So that, that just gets in – honestly, it gets in the whole obfuscation and the confusion thing like we are talking about in the past show – and also worldview poisoning because you're having this warped view of what you know a predator is when you know all the whole the whole predator thing is is very real it comes from a very real threat from our ancient past of a of a animal predator you know you have to be safe if you're not with your tribe if you're alone you could easily be taken out by a big 
cat, lion, or bear. Any type of big animal out there could easily take you out if you weren't with your group. Or even if you're with your group, you still have to worry sometimes in the fear of the darkness and, and the possible predatory animal that could come and take you out. So it's it makes sense why people are afraid of these issues, but they don't understand where the fear is really coming from. They're just, they're just told by our current culture and system and media that, okay, this is the enemy, this is why they're the enemy, and they put you in a state of fear so you don't use your higher, your higher neocortex or any thinking centers. Like, I just have to bring up 9-11 real quick. When that day happened, people were put into such a heavy state of fear, the whole predator meme was easily installed into people's consciousness and the fear and chaos and darkness, all of it, really, and abandonment. All four of them were heavily installed in the humanity's subconscious, especially America's. I agree, Mike. I, I see that humanity's primal fears are born out of circumstances shrouded with real dangers. And predators of our ancient past included large animals and reptiles that could inflict massive injury or simply devour us. And if we weren't engaged by the naturally occurring fears in the midst of these creatures, if we didn't recognize the dangers in the presence of these predators, we would be infinitely more vulnerable because the fear we experience in that circumstance heightens our awareness and our senses so that we can make decisions quickly and engage in a fight or flight modality of consciousness immediately. But in today's society, the occult dominators of the world play on those fears, a fear of predation, by giving us a new boogeyman to fear each week, whether they're evil individuals like dictators or cult leaders or gangs or groups like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Taliban. These boogeymen are engineered to keep us in that fear-based modality because when we're afraid, we make quick decisions based out of that emotion. We want to we want to end the chaos. We want to end the danger. So once that fear has been engineered and the people are afraid, the government can offer up its solutions, which always result in less freedom of the people and more control in the hands of government. They create a bad guy. They create chaos and terror, which results in a fear-based and confused reaction from the people. And then government offers a solution to the problem it created. Problem, reaction, solution. This technique of control really relies heavily on the exploitation of our primal fears of predators, chaos, abandonment, and darkness. The ancient fears that we have weren't as wrapped up in complex deceptions like these are today. So we have to think our way through these deceptions. And back in the day, it was pretty obvious stimulus. You know, you got a big bear running at you. You've got a force coming in that's invading now we really got to step back and think about it so we're not just responding to whatever they throw at us. We've referenced a couple of false flag situations or they'll create an enemy that they actually fund and raise up. We're making some assertions here for anybody who's listening that hasn't looked into maybe ISIS or 9-11. Ben Swan has a really good video called The Origins of ISIS. It really documents a lot of the paper trail of our influence in creating, arming, and supporting in one way or another terrorist regimes, particularly ISIS. And then there's really good evidence that we created and funded al-Qaeda. And then 9-11, I mean, there's a lot of really good evidence on that as well. I know James Corbett did a really short one that just packed in a bunch of information. I think it was just 9-11, a conspiracy theory by James Corbett. And I think it's only like five minutes long and he just talks really fast and has a bunch of images pop up and it's got like a little subtle music in the background it, and it's got like millions of views. But if you just like pause it as he's talking and go and like look up everything he's saying, you know, there's there's a lot of evidence for just whoever may be in the audience that is thinking, wow, they're making these wild assertions that there's you were being lied to by our media and our government and they're running. Well, they are. When we say they, these controllers, these dominate, dominators, these manipulators, episode 17 on What on Earth is Happening podcast series with Jay Parker, really just – so Jay, Jay Parker is you know a friend of ours. We had him on, a, on the podcast previously, and he was born into a satanic ritual abuse situation with a bloodline Illuminati family. I mean, there are, there are bloodline people involved in this. There's big money people on a corporate level involved in this. And there's people that have an agenda that are willing to use violence and deceptions to take over other groups of people, to enslave them through violence. 
That's really the one true divide. And they do exist. And when they put us in this fear modality, we lose our imagination. And that's the thing that they fear the most. I guess ultimately they, they fear the whole idea of us coming together and realizing who they are and how powerful we are. But a big aspect of, of that is our imagination. And when our consciousness is in a fight or flight modality, a reactionary modality of a fear-based modality, we can't tap into that higher center of imagination. And they don't want that. They don't want us to be able to like have a moment where we can use critical thought and then imagine our way out of the slavery that we're in. They don't, they don't want that. That reminds me of a George Carlin uh comedy stand-up thing he was doing he was talking about you know what they don't want they don't want you know well-informed citizens they want obedient workers just smart enough to do the daily jobs but just dumb enough not to question the system of of control and psychopathy they live in yeah and regarding they regarding the people employing these manipulation tactics these mind control techniques we live in a society that is ignorant of their existence the society is not nescient I want to briefly delineate the difference between nescience and ignorance. Both terms are born out of not knowing. Ignorance implies that information and or knowledge of something is being ignored. In this case, information and knowledge of the existence and nature of the dark, occult, elitist, psychopathic hierarchy is actively being ignored or denied by the bulk of today's society. Whereas nescience implies that knowledge or information regarding something is simply unavailable or that an individual and or group of individuals can't be reasonably expected to understand the knowledge or information. For instance, a small child cannot be reasonably expected to comprehend quantum mechanics and complicated mathematics. No one can reasonably expect a small child to understand complex systems of numbers and formulas, rendering the child nescient. Someone living in the bush of Alaska may not have any access to the internet, libraries, or video archives that house information that is freely available to others and therefore can be considered nescient of said information. Conversely, an ignorant person has access to said information but either ignores it or denies it in order to maintain their worldview rather than align their worldview accordingly upon discovering new knowledge and information. And information regarding the occult dominators who employ these techniques is available and abundant. We live in a society that is ignorant of their nature and existence, not nescient. People don't know because they don't want to know. It's not a matter of whether these mind control tactics exist or that they are being used against us by psychopaths. That's not even arguable anymore. It is happening everywhere, actively. If you don't know it, it's because you don't want to know. You haven't gone there. You haven't asked the right questions. You haven't sought out the whole truth. Yeah, it just reminds me of a – I mean this is a simple quote from the uh, CEO of Nestle. He recently said, human beings don't have a right to water. Now, the basic fundamentals of life, this individual is saying you don't have a right to it. If you can't see that, that that there's a psychopathic group running, or at least even you not even running things, just even running some things, such as this water company trying to privatize water, the basic necessity for any life on this planet or elsewhere in the universe. I mean, what is the first thing we do when we we're looking for life elsewhere? We look for water, and for an individual to come out openly and say no rights, like he has some you know divine right to say this. He has no right to say this. He has absolutely no – he has no special rights than any other person or being on this planet does. We all have inalienable rights that come from natural law, not legalese stuff that comes from the system that – I mean legalese is meant to protect the system itself. That's why lawyers go through all the education they do is because – they just, I mean, it's made to be this crazy, complex, confusing thing because that's what lies are. Truth is simple. Lies are always complex. And to keep people running around in, the, in that state of confusion keeps, keeps people in these states of low consciousness, unable to see what these different uh, methods that are being implemented upon us. There's a lot of people out there that might be thinking, well, this is really dark stuff, and uh, I like watching football, and I have a good time drinking beers and hanging out with the ladies. Why would I even want to waste my time looking into something that's dark like this? And the response I give to that, I actually learned in the What on Earth is Happening series where Mark was referencing, Mark Passio was referencing the two ways 
that the universe teaches, that it was taught in the ancient teachings in Egypt, to demystify it, it's kind of just simple. There's wisdom and there's suffering. So we can learn through wisdom and look into things and listen to people and experience and observe and discover and adjust our behavior accordingly, or we can ignore what's going on in reality. And for bad things to happen, for evil to fester, good people do nothing. So the slavery increases when people aren't looking into this and it just, the totalitarian tiptoe just continues to grow and grow and grow. So the reason that you would want to go through the depths of the darkness of knowing this stuff is so that we don't get in a situation where we're in escalating bondage and slavery because it might seem dark, but it's going to get way, way worse here on planet earth if more people don't wake up to what's going on right now and what's actually escalating right now and figure it out, do something about it. Well, I mean, step one is learn about it and that way you're not as affected by it. And then get out in the world and do some behavior that helps to disengage us from these dominating systems, you know, like meetup groups. And what was the the thing you mentioned last podcast, Mike? Yeah, yeah, full circle, full circle project.net. I highly recommend everyone to check it out. It's just a way to connect everyone locally, and it's a way to get you, everyone to go on online, see who's around you, and then meet up in person. It's not, this is not another social media type of thing. We do enough of that already. It's granted, social media has its place, but this is just to network with other like minds and individuals who are looking for action and just to meet up and talk about solutions to the problems we face. And I, I, I swear, local action is such a solution to these problems because community coming together, that's, that's people you can rely upon or start to get to know, to tr- start to get to trust. This goes straight into the relieving the fear of abandonment because we have this fear of losing our, our government, our military, defensive force, and even our parents. And the, and the media heavily preys upon this fear of abandonment. So, you know, we're always worrying about, oh, well, what if the government collapsed or the economic system collapsed? That's another form of abandonment, the economic economic abandonment, you know, all the food stamps and various other types of things that the government is helping out with, you know, Social Security, welfare, Medicaid, all those different types of things are, those are just one reason, those are, that's a small part of an economic abandonment thing people would worry about. And to relieve that fear is to come together in community. Community means common unity. That's all it means. And we have lost that so much in our society. We have a great connection through the internet these days, but we lack a face-to-face real interactions that we so desire. And that's why we seek out these institutions, I I feel, is because we don't have the community. We don't have the the common bond, the common unity of uh, our neighbors and our brothers and sisters coming together to work towards simple things, just like helping each other out with food and water and, and, and energy. I mean, simple and shelter, all those things. If people work together, we can eliminate the fear of abandonment. And that eliminates chaos pretty well, too, because what are you afraid of? What chaos can spring from a, a strong community? Not much. Yeah, and all these primal fears correlate with one another. One leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. We fear being abandoned by those who provide for us. We've made government the provider, and we act as if they're responsible for our well-being. So we rely on government to keep us alive and safe, and therefore fear its absence. We fear its absence because we've rendered ourselves incapable of defending ourselves, feeding ourselves, and managing our own lives without government, and predict a chaotic outcome if left to exist with our own devices and choices. This is followed by the fear of predators capitalizing on the chaos and our vulnerability during the absence of our gods and masters and providers in government. All the while, this whole psychological process is shrouded in the fear of exploring things unknown to us, knowledge that could liberate us, evolve our consciousness, and make true sovereign adults out of us remains in darkness because these primal fears rule over the collective mind of humanity. Because we are currently semi-comfortable as a whole in the established hierarchy of control and would rather remain enslaved than take proper moral action in the face of these deeply rooted primal fears, the controllers and their institutions remain firmly in place over us. 
I wanted to give one good example of going into the darkness and coming out with a, a strong solution. That's simply cancer. Uh, people are have this constant fear of cancer. It's like what one third, one in every three people will get cancer supposedly, you know, in our lifetime. And the thing that that you don't know about, or you may do know about, and if you do, more more credit to you. If you don't, no problem. Uh, but it's it's cannabis oil. Simply put, it's it's not like smoking a joint or something will you cure your cancer. No, it's about high THC cannabis oil. That has been proven again and again and again to just cure so many different illnesses. And in fact, if people, many people may not be aware of this, but there was a Cancer Act of 1939, which actually made it illegal for you to even discuss cures for cancer. If you don't know about this, I highly recommend checking that legislation out. That legislation keeps this whole suppression of a solution to a fear, which is cancer, which the government and the me- medical industry love to push. That's another th- fear we have is fear of abandonment from the medical institutions. Oh, how would we ever cure ourselves? How would we ever stay healthy without them? Well, we, we're so used to uh, a drugs and surgery world. And granted, there are times that drugs and surgery are good, as, especially when you're in a critical condition. That's when they're really useful. But for long-term type stuff, such as cancer, diabetes, your own maintenance of your health, I mean, everything, pick it. The pharmaceutical companies try to create a drug for it, and they're trying to mimic nature, and it, it doesn't ever work. I guarantee you, you watch with the whole marijuana or cannabis legalization, they're going to try to create some type of synthetic version of it, and it won't work like the normal, the normal organic cannabis does because that's us trying to tamper with things that are already perfect. We don't need to alter cannabis or hemp or any of those things. So those are great solutions to health problems. And people need to look into cannabis oil. It is a very powerful tool we can use. Yeah, and with nature being abundant, free, and available, corporations will mimic and create synthetic alternatives of what nature offers us. And then they patent it and profit from it. So first off, people shouldn't wait until they're sick to try and get healthy. And if people go back to doing natural things and eating natural healthy food, there will be much less room for a medical institution to profit off of them. And when people are holistic rather than allopathic about their health, they tend to prevent a lot of suffering and disease. So rather than taking complex chemical drugs and twisting up our biochemistry, we should go to nature first and see what it has to offer us. And always remember that a patient who is cured is a customer who is lost. So it's very important to know ourselves and to know nature. When we take the time to explore the darkness and make the unknown known, we can then solve our own problems rather than being at the mercy of an institution and harboring the fear of its absence. Quick aside, I just want to say we'll definitely be getting into all those different types of solutions to all the problems. Well, I should say all the methods of manipulation we're presenting and all this dark. After all this darkness and all the deep uh, shadow we're getting into, we're going to get into a lot of solutions for all this stuff. You guys have both mentioned institutions, and that seems like a natural effect of fear of being responsible as an individual and as a community. And it's crazy the extent to which this fear has led people to trust the institutions over nature or, or even over, over logic or over morality. You know, we have an institution of defense. We have an institution of health. We have an institution of currency. We have an institution of government and making laws. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, the truth is simple. Nature is abundant. And we could come together and work in a way that's nonviolent and way more abundant if we're not so fearful that we can't do things on our own. I mean, we're so heavily domesticated that we've atrophied our natural ability to live in a, in a world. It's crazy. We beg for these institutions to enslave us. It's disgusting. Yeah, because humanity has never really known – uh, true freedom, and also we've been so used to just okay, we'll have a revolution, and then we appoint new leaders, and then the cycle repeats itself, and that's a problem. It's like we got to be careful moving forward. We don't really need we need a revolution of consciousness. We don't need the same old, same old. I mean, I, I know I think I brought this up in the last show, and if I if I didn't, I'll just mention it here. It's just that's what we really need to focus on. Is not 
is not another revolution. We've done that again and again and again. It doesn't. It does not get us anywhere because then we we're just giving our power over to, like you said, Zach, these institutions that are in place of community and in, in nature and cooperation. They're just these psychopathic systems that will continually keep churning out psychopaths because it's the institutions themselves that create the psychopaths because it's a psychopathic system. When there's only so many spots at the top that make so much amount of money that offer so much prestige and social prowess and all these different things people supposedly uh, strive for, then there's going to be a fight for that every single time in every institution. You can look at any type of institution, like Zach was talking about. We have economics, we have uh, you know, healthcare, education, uh, politics, all this stuff. Every single institution you could look at, it's people on the bottom who don't really know what's going on and people at the top who, who do. And it's people who are always fighting against each other because they're in a perpetual state of shortage. And then it keeps people in a state of fear about – all those fears we mentioned. The economy is a big one. It really is. It keeps it's it's a system that's in perpetual shortage because of interest based currency and debt based currency, where there never can be enough for anybody. It's literally you cannot ever have an abundant economic system with the way we have things in place. It is impossible. All it does is keep people in these in this state in this low state of consciousness and in these strong primal fears. We really need to find another solution to this economic system. Do I know exactly right now? No, but I think a good start is um, Bitcoin or even just – I mean I think that's a good start or anything that's not centralized and where, where communities can trade without government intervention. That is a great start and hopefully you know, move to true energy, which is just food, shelter, water, you know, all the clean – clean air, which we don't have anymore, clean skies, which hopefully we get back one day if we start taking action and start calling the system out for what it is and start calling these people out for what they're doing and their abuse of office and their abuse of trust. Right. We've got people time and time again proposing that the solution to the world's problems is just getting the right guy in office or getting the current control-based institutions reformed and occupied by all the right magical politicians. And this is always an externalization of the inherent power within the people. Rather than going within and making light of the darkness, rather than truly obtaining real gnosis of ourselves, which in effect results in more sovereignty, self-respect, and capacity to create positive change, the people propose that we need new leaders and controllers. The general consensus is that it's someone else's job to fix everything and decide our fate for us. And that attitude is born out of a very fearful and poisonous worldview. It's born out of an attempt to absolve any responsibility to take proper moral action and be personally accountable for our lives, which always results in more slavery and suffering because the psychopathic manipulators, the interspecies predators, or in other words, the wolves in sheep's clothing, will gladly fill that vacancy as a perceived leader or savior absorbing all the granted power from the people and then capitalizing on the people's fears and ignorance to further advance their control and power. So forget centralizing and externalizing power and responsibility, okay? The solution is owning our power and knowing ourselves and the world around us rather than just giving it away to an institution or a controller. Yeah, we give them permission to control us. These very institutions exist. I mean, they supposedly were we put them in place for whatever reason, if we did. <laughs> but um, if we did put them in place for our own benefit, then then why is the world in such a mess and in in basic human rights and freedoms are such in such decline constantly? And the system itself is just worrying about you know sustaining the economy, improving the economy. That's you know you always hear these words. It's like, well, what about improving? Humanity. What about improving the Earth? I mean, we're li- we're turning this place into a trash heap, and there's no reason for it. It's just our fear of going into that darkness of the self and looking at the problems within our own psyche and our own and our own minds, as well as the collective. It's not going there that is making the shadow so incredibly large in this world. We need to bring the shadow into balance again, where the shadow is not encompassing the whole damn planet where if compared to it being in balance with the light 
people are afraid of darkness. I mean, they think they equate it with evil, and no, it's not evil. It's just something that needs to be looked at that put it into a state of balance. Because I mean, let's just take a simple seed for example. You put a seed in the ground. You put the seed into a wet, dark, damp soil to let it grow, and then it sprouts into the light. That's a perfect as above so below description of what we need to do to grow. We need to nourish ourselves with knowledge so we can come out and see all the solutions and see the light and see the all the all those options we do have to change this world for the better. And I just want to bring up the uh, chaos and how they how so many movies these days are feeding into this mindset of chaos, chaos, chaos. I just saw this recent thing from um, I think some Mad Max movie where it's just motorcycle gangs ruling the planet. And it literally is just a, a movie of psychopathy. It's like you just see these vehicles driving around, shooting each other. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. It's completely crazy. Everyone looks nuts. It's, it Stuff's blowing up everywhere. It's like, what's the – and they just they want to feed, people, feed people's minds with that. And it's – just as you feed your body, you feed your mind, and if you're putting that kind of garbage into your mind, you're you're not gonna get, you're not gonna like what comes out on the other side. I'll tell you, when we build community and come together, the fear of chaos should easily subside and abandonment and all these other fears. They're not relevant when we do the inner work and when we do look at ourselves in the way that we should, and stop hiding from this this fear of of, of looking within and a fear of knowledge and. You know, just and stop just being f- focused on just entertaining yourself. You know, I get people are beat down from the system, but you still the system's made to beat you down, so you become subservient and, and you don't want to look at it now because oh, I'm too beat from work, my job is too tiring, or so on and so forth. Yeah, that may be true, but guess what? You got to do the work because there'll be a reward for doing that work. There really is. There's a gaining of courage and confidence that comes with this knowledge. You know what attacks are being sent at you, and you know how to defend yourself against them. Put you in a position of power, and no more, oh, what can I do? Because, well, I know the problems, and I know how to solve them. The courage and the power that comes from not allowing fear to control us can be expressed. And So we've got a brain, we've got a heart, and we've got guts. We've got thoughts, we've got emotions, and we've got actions. When we're coming from the framework of fear, we're ignorant— willfully ignorant because of our fear. We're apathetic. We lose care. We atrophy our care for ourselves and others. And we become, with our actions, we become lazy and we become cowards. But when we look into that fear, go into that shadow, put thinking in between stimulus and response, gain the wisdom of what's going on, we can become intelligent, caring with a capital C for all, and courageous. And that's what needs to happen on the individual level. And we need to spread that contagiously throughout the communities of our societies so that we can overcome these dominators because they're only going to be able to keep us slaves as long as we're ignorant, apathetic, lazy, and cowards. We got to choose love over fear. Like Bill, how did Bill Hicks put it? Yeah, I love Bill Hicks, man. But yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to try to remember right now, but he's got a bunch of really good one-liners and one of them's about love and fear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even just quote from David Icke simply is this, you know, just I'll just kind of paraphrase it myself. But, you know, fear is illusion. Infinite love is is truth. You know, everything else is illusion. But infinite love is is truth. And the more we know ourselves, the less we need any institution or controller to provide for us and rule over us. And when we come to really know ourselves, we will have a clear understanding of our internal qualities and functions. So when fears boil up within us, we won't be frantic and helpless. True confidence comes from knowing. And when we know ourselves, we can act boldly and courageously in the face of our fears. And as Zach has highlighted previously, our power lies between stimulus and response. The more we rule over our fears and emotions, the more control we will have in that space before we respond, and therefore a more clear view of how to act will be available to us. When we reach that level of awareness, we no longer live in fear of potential chaos. We conversely live with the confidence that whatever chaos may ensue, we have the power to survive and act accordingly. 
However, if we are ignorant to our own functionalities and internal processes, someone who does understand the human psyche and emotional centers can have a field day preying upon us, which is the reality we occupy currently, a dark, occult, elite class of psychopaths with ancient knowledge of the origins and nature of humanity and how the minds of men operate and function are ruling and enslaving the ignorant masses just clueless people who are ruled by fear. We must face our fears, know ourselves, and come to understand the techniques and mindset of our enemy if we ever want to truly be alive and free from controllers and dominators. Mm -hmm. Everyone becoming leaders, you know, getting on board. Start your own show, create your own group. Do whatever you feel with your own intuition. Get in touch with your inner self and your higher self and nature, and it really will guide you in the right way, in the, in the way you need to go. You know, and th- this really is a healing process when you look at it. Uh, learning of all these methods of manipulation is you heal everyone as you go through them because you understand it, take it within yourself, and then you are no longer bound by that. You're no longer a victim anymore. You are the one in charge now of your own life, more so than ever. I mean, when you are aware of all these different tactics, you're no longer being hit like, you know, but... <laughs> There's not a sniper taking shots at you from every angle anymore. You know where the you know where that sniper is, and you don't need to go down that road anymore. You know the other road you can take. You can completely bypass that individual and protect yourself, and be empowered and know what to do. So many people know there's a problem, but they don't know what the problem is, and these are a big part of the problem. <laughs> Dealing with these fears and dealing with these these ancient primordial things we've grown with as a race. I'm sure sometime down the road we'll get into the possible human origins and possible um, involvement in humanity's history. But it's, it's just very strange that we have all these different abnormalities. And I'm not going to get into that now, but that's something we could definitely consider doing a show on in the future. And that would also bring up the whole abandonment thing as well down the road. But for now, we'll just stay on the what's happening on the ground and what we can see and what we can feel and what we know. Richard Grove has a really good for like feet on the ground as far as what we can prove with artifactual um, information, and like not not even having to go into the speculation realm. It's a term he used uh, intro specific kleptoparasites. And I think it was actually coined by a Rothschild, which makes it really ironic, but it's a term for interspecies predators. And so you don't have to go really, really, really far, far out with this to get an idea of what a lot of this looks like. And there's predators that we have out there that are human beings that, that wield deceptions to control us. And they play on our, on our fears, on our primal fears to get us to react to what they put in front of us. So we'll go where they want us to go and do what they want us to do. And we need to become aware of these intraspecific kleptoparasite. I just like saying that, intraspecific kleptoparasite. <laughs> I wanted to say something about chaos again. I know I kind of already uh, touched it, but when I go to work, I work at a restaurant and I talk about this stuff every opportunity I can. And some people love it. Some people hate it. People end up liking me and some are like, oh, you're crazy, but I love you. And a lot of people are like, whoa, you know, it's starting to make sense. And I'll have a similar conversation with somebody for over a year and they still won't get the aspect that we live under a far greater form of chaos right now than we could ever have without a government. And I just thought of something that ties in with this, the book Brave New World. If somebody's not familiar with that book, I, I highly, highly recommend it. I think there was even a movie made after it you, you can watch. But that is a society that is living under extreme chaos where people are born into a system and chemicals are injected into them and they're manipulating them from pre-birth through birth and all these different chemical ways, psychological ways to get them to fit into a certain piece in society. And then they get them to love their servitude so that they're manipulating their brain psychologically and physically to the extent that they love being a slave. That's chaos. And that's the kind of chaos we're talking about. It's covert chaos that we're talking about. And that is far more chaotic than the wild, wild west. And it's not that if we didn't have that, we would have a perpetual wild, wild west forever. I would argue that the wild, wild west situation plays itself out much faster than this one does so that we work our way to a balance. Because if you go around harming other people and the playing field is more level, 
so that we don't have the majority of the people in the society supporting in one way or another a monopoly over violence, then the playing field can be more leveled. And there's way more people out there that are not psychopathic than there are people that are psychopathic. And when we, when we come together to eliminate that threat, then it kind of pans out. But right now, we got so many people believing in this huge monopoly on violence and supporting it with their emotions and their money and their actions. This is a serious, this is a brave new world situation we're deal- dealing with. And it's, it's uh, way more chaotic than it could ever be without a government. Yeah, I think a uh, community would be a perfect transition to whatever type of better world we want to create. I mean, I don't even think it has to go that way if we start building communities now. For example, if things did fall apart, you know, the economy crashes, so on and so forth, if people already have the beginnings of a community starting or even a community already built, and even if you don't have a community built, it's just starting is you're understanding who is who wants to work together, who wants to cooperate already off the bat, and who wants to put their energy in to help one another. And they're not coming from a selfish motive, you know. And I think that could be a very useful tool for trespassing these times, getting through these times. That's what people worry so much about, these all these failing institutions. Well they're they're destined to fail. It's just it's a matter of when, not if. You know, the economy is gonna go someday. I don't know when. Who knows? <laughs> but I mean, if we put syst- if we put communities in place and put real I, I wanna say real systems, organic systems, not artificial systems like the one we have in place. You know, systems aren't really bad. It's just our use of them whether the system supports human life or it destroys human life and feeds off it, that's the real question we need to ask ourselves. This system is just – it's a parasitical system. It's meant to feed off of our our energy and to create secondary and sometimes – well, I shouldn't say create primary psychopaths, but give them a place to really operate with impunity and full power. People are worried about losing these institutions. These very institutions empower psychopaths to the most influential places on this planet. So you're giving the person who's, who has the least care in the world the most power, and that is very dangerous. And we can alleviate that by coming together and calling the system out for what it is, an anti-life system, and create a, a pro-life system, the one that focuses on cooperation and, and does care about the homeless man down the street and the, the every person who's suffering economically. People don't have clean water or food or energy, all these real issues that matter. Not just, do you have this certification? Do you have that certification? All these legalese type things, real real things in real existence, not this made up stuff, which in the legal system really is. When you really sit down and think about what this, is, what the legal system it is, it really is just a tool for the system to keep itself up. It always gets it running around. I mean, for example, I live in Cleveland and there's this, let's see, Tamir Rice was shot by a cop about a year ago he was playing with a toy gun and has there anything and is anything transpired from that not anything not a single thing there's no investigations there's nothing really going on i mean if there is i sure haven't heard about it and i doubt there's much energy or or resources being or manpower being put towards it that just shows you try to work within the system it doesn't it does not work you can sometimes use a system against itself such as you know calling out war crimes that's fine that appeals to people who are not so aware of the deep psychopathic system. And I think that's a very useful tool to reach people on the ground who are maybe not so aware of the, the deep, big conspiracies, but they they know there's a problem and you can kind of find out if they care or not by reaching out with that knowledge and that understanding of you know abuse of office. These people are just abusing their trust who, who, for the common person, whoever put them in there, whoever even voted for them. You know, I'm not, I don't agree with that at all, but I'm just saying you can sometimes use the system uh, against itself, such as calling out war crimes and war criminals, like the like the ones we have running our planet right now. Yes, local people coming together to work out local problems morally and courageously always results in a stronger community. And the stronger the local community, the less need the people will have for any type of control-based institution to take care of them resulting in more freedom and power in the lives of the people. If the people meet their needs together and by way of a voluntary system, then the society will progress nonviolently. 
The people thriving in a society based in nonviolence will prosper far greater with their sense of cooperation than any control-based system born out of competition and scarcity. The people will inherently know to protect and secure their own liberties and rights by using defensive force to eliminate any aggressive threats and will only engage in that modality when a real-life danger is present. All of this is possible only when the people come to know themselves deeply. But upon discovering deep knowledge of the self, the people will be immune to the deceptions and manipulations put forward by dark occultists attempting to exploit the people's fears and ignorance. So the freedom that a society experiences is directly proportionate to how well a society knows itself and what they do with the knowledge. The solution to these fears being preyed upon is a self-aware moral society that works together and cooperates to achieve sustainability and freedom for all rather than appointing leaders that most people will never meet and who are extremely difficult to contact and talk to and who are even more difficult to hold accountable when they sabotage the peace and rights of the people. So a strong local community is definitely something that is needed to alleviate our primal fears. Beautiful. I think that about wraps up this episode, guys. We've done one heck of a job describing these primal fears and what it looks like to not be controlled by them. What are we, we're getting into uh, divide and conquer next week. Yeah, that'll be the third episode of the series of manipulation tactics and mind control techniques as laid out by Mark Pazio. Everybody check out his podcast series, What on Earth is Happening? Start from the first episode and Take it all the way to the end because it is really good stuff. It is impeccable information. And his delivery is very professional and very direct. So from the three of I speak for the three of us. That is valuable information. It's a great podcast. And we're doing our job to relay this information and beat the drum of truth and get people talking about it, get people discussing it, get people researching it. And we're going to carry on this series more. And yes, the next episode will be the divide and conquer strategy of controllers. I just want to mention real quick, uh, I've had a couple of people since we started this podcast ask, um, well, what's your niche? Why, why are you doing this podcast? Isn't it kind of a silly game? Everybody's got a podcast now. No, no we need millions of people with different tones of voice, with different backgrounds, with different flavors of expression to beat the drums of truth more prolifically than the drums of deception, like a Skittle bags of truth with a flavor for everyone, put it out there. There's some people that'll listen to us that would never listen to Mark Passio or maybe not have heard about him if we didn't say this. And we're not simply just relaying and parroting Mark Passio. That just happens to be a teacher who has helped raise our awareness about what's going on inside of us and in the world along with other teachers that we're going to be referencing and some of our own independent research and interviews we're going to be bringing forward. But you don't have to know something that no one else knows to start using the most powerful tool that you have, which is your voice. So uh, please go out there, start a podcast, start a meetup group. You put what you're learning into action. Highly recommend it. Yeah, and it feels great and you will meet amazing people networking like that. We all need to be leaders. There is no savior coming. The savior is right here because we're the leaders and we're going to make the change ourselves. That's right. No masters, no slaves. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Bye, guys. No master. No slaves.